Simon. Great, thanks. <clears throat> well, it's a big, uh, great pleasure to be here. Thank you all so much for coming. It's, it's, it's such a, a thrill coming to uh, Birmingham every year to, to meet you all. I remember four years ago, I thought it was maybe premature to hold a conference, but then everybody showed up, and it's um, <clears throat> gone from strength to strength since. So um, it has been um, an amazing year. I, look, when I stood here last year, I said, this has been rather a remarkable year. Lots has happened. But I had no idea what would happen in the following 12 months. Um, so it's been a, a fantastic year, and there's quite a lot still to do. So I just got, wanted to give you an idea of some of the things that have been going on. So many of you will know some of these. Just give you a quick reminder um, and a quick pointer to some of the things where uh, we're working on now. So um, <clears throat> here it is. The, um, uh, here's our, what's been happening in the past. We started uh, back in 2008, um, and we felt like uh, uh, small people at the bottom of a very deep mine shaft saying, computer science is important. <laughs> and, um, and then we sort of chugged, and gradually you know, things got bigger, and we had conferences. It was all very exciting. And then, but 2012 was the, this kind of exciting moment at which um, uh, the, the 2000, this last 12 months was the year in which um, some sort of national level breakthroughs happened. So firstly, there was um, um, Eric Schmidt's famous speech, which you will have, um, I'm sure, all um, read or, um, or had a look at. And uh, it's worth saying, I think, that I don't think he would have had this passage in his speech had it not been for CAS. With large organizations like Google, it's always hard to know the difference between inputs and outputs, and quite a lot happens sort of quietly, you know, in conversations. But I think it would be fair to say that without Kaz, these words would not have appeared in um, Eric Schmidt's speech. So that, uh, as Bill Mitchell put it, didn't so much um, uh, rattle the cage, it sort of kicked the door off the, uh, off the hinges. Uh, so away we went. Then um, BET, uh, this is uh, Michael Gove's uh, policy speech at BET, and uh, the thing that most people focus on in that speech was the, the proposed withdrawal of the ICT program of study. But the bit that I always hang on to is this passage about uh, uh, computer science as a, as a school-level discipline. And he said words that could have been written by CAS. Indeed, I suspect they were lifted initially from various CAS outpourings that we'd uh, sent to the DFE. Again, it's hard to connect outputs and inputs. But it was very clear that he understood that computer science is a discipline, right, as distinct from an applied skill, and, and, and in, in a way that maths and physics and geography are disciplines. So that was really good, because it was a sort of top-level acknowledgement. Of course, there wasn't any, really any wood behind that arrow, um, but it was nevertheless a very helpful um, breakthrough. Then there was the Royal Society report. Sort of within, in fact, it was the same. Was it the same day? Something like that. Almost the same day. The, the Royal Society report was published on computing in school, um, and uh, it's available to you all. I'm sure you've all had a look at it. Here, are, um, so this was very much along the lines that uh, Kaz has been arguing. Very clear recommendations um, that supported exactly what we'd always been saying. Then, and this was much more unexpected to me. Um, we had been going to meet the awarding bodies. Uh, fairly regularly. They've always been very receptive, very supportive, very friendly, but they are not um, government agencies. They're not under our control. They, have to make, they, they can't put on exams that nobody takes, right, because they're, they're not for profit, but they're businesses in the end. They've got to make ends meet. And so they were, quite rightly, non-committal about what would happen, right? So we'd say, you should have computer science GCSEs. And they say, yes, perhaps we should. We'll think about that. Um, but amazingly, then within months, OCR having led the way, AQA, Edexcel, uh, CIE, and uh, WJAC have all followed suit. And to do so within months, I think it's completely astonishing, um, particularly with this incredibly short turnaround of, uh, uh, you know, maybe even too short of uh, kind of launching um, uh, GCSE just months later. So for me, this was a big, um, the removal of a big blocker. If there's no GCSEs, you can't teach computer science, right? It's as simple as that, isn't it? So the possibility of having GCSEs and in quite a wide variety, because I think each awarding body will take a different stance on it is really, really good. So I think that was a huge win. And major thanks to the people in the awarding body. Some of you I know are here today. Thank you for being so receptive and for doing that internal work inside that made the case to your, um, your superiors. And it's not, I do not take that for granted. There's a lot of work done by people inside the awarding bodies to make this happening. This is not just the result of external pressure. Still, a very big thing, very big thing. Lots of media coverage. You will have seen this. My favorite is this one, the six-page uh, supplement in The Observer. Curiously, on April the 1st, but they assure me it was not an April Fool, I have it physically blue tacked to the wall outside my office. I'm a bit sort of voce about the April the 1st bit. But, uh, and uh, newspapers are a bit somewhat megaphones. I'm not entirely happy with the, the, uh, the idea that computer science equals programming. I think it, it contains and is suffused by programming, but it's not the same thing as programming. So I try to make that point. But, it's, uh, but newspapers can't convey very nuanced messages. And this message is way better than the ones we've had before. I mean, lots of other coverage. There's a wiki, our wiki page gives lots of media coverage. There's several things a month, so have a look. The, um, 
This is uh, most relevant to, uh, to English people rather than Welsh or Scots here, but for us this is big. Uh, Michael Gove's chosen mechanism for um, encouraging schools to, uh, to offer and support study, uh, subjects that are important, but perhaps um, more challenging or perhaps even harder to get really good grades that your GCSEs in, is the English Baccalaureate. And this, so six months ago, when we were at the Department for Education, we raised this repeatedly and said, Computer science should be an option within the English Baccalaureate. And the official said, do not even suggest that. It's a lost cause. The EBAC is a walled castle, and there are bodies in every direction around it. Do not approach. You'd be better spending your e energy doing something else. So we sort of backed off a bit. And then Michael Gove says this in his speech at BET. This was a complete turnaround since then. The, um, uh, the DfE has made it clear to us that they are looking for a, a, an, a, looking for a way to make computer science an option within the EBAC, which I think, you tell me if I'm wrong in the breaks, but I believe this would make it much easier to make the case to head teachers to offer computer science because it would be, um, uh, uh, because it would count towards their EBAC scores, even though it may be um, a somewhat rigorous and challenging subject. So um, uh, I can tell this for sure about my head teacher. So I think this is really big and it does represent, I think, a complete reversal of position. And I don't think that reversal in the, in the, in the Department for Education would have happened without the, the sort of mood music that you in this room have created. Um, so thank you for that. The um, most eye-catching bit of Michael Gove's speech was, of course, the bit about withdrawing the ICT program of study. At that stage, it was a proposal. There was a consultation to which we made a submission. You can see that on the uh, the CAS wiki somewhere. Um, I, did, I think it's on the Outward Facing site as well. Um, the uh, rep res response to that consultation was announced, I think, just this last Monday. And it's worth a read because not only does it say, yes, we will withdraw the program of study, and to be honest with you, I don't know what you think. My sense is that this was a more symbolic move than a practical one in the sense that the program of study was already quite flexible. You could do quite a lot under the existing program of study without contravening, as it were. So it's a deeply symbolic move to withdraw it. But in practical terms, it might not have made that much difference. So for me, the most important bit of the response was this middle paragraph here. So in our response to the consultation document, we said, we hear from CAS members that there's a risk that some schools will take the disapplication of the ICT program of study as a signal to withdraw from ICT, if not altogether, then at least as much as possible, right? The, the government doesn't care about it. They think it's NAF and they just want to withdraw from there. So, so it's a sort of slap in the face for, for ICT and for all of you. So we'll withdraw, we'll sack you all. So that, that was the message that we were getting from at least some of you on the CAS list. So we put this in some detail in our response, including verbatim quotes. We got some permission from you. And um, as a result, I believe as a pretty direct result, in the response, you may or may not think this is a good result, but as a clear statement of the importance that the government, the government attaches to ICT education, they've decided that it will be a, continue to be a national curriculum subject. And this actually contradicts what the expert panel, the expert panel report, also on our, I think there's links to the, all these on our wiki, had said ICT and it, they mentioned computer science should be part of what they call the basic curriculum, I think, which means uh, you should probably have something like that, but we won't really tell you what it is, and it certainly won't be compulsory to teach it. Um, so uh, for better or worse, Michael Gove has decided, no, 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 in contradicting the, um, uh, the panel's report, it's going to remain statutory in some form at all four key stages. So this is, a, this is a, you know, it's a bit buried in that announcement, but it's a big policy announcement. So I think you can take this back to your head teachers and say, look, right, don't sack us yet. <laughs> You're going to need us. <laughs> if you see what I mean, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> um, but I thought this was encouraging because we had said uh, there is a danger that schools will, will, will treat this disapplication as an indication that the subject is not important, right? And they've responded by that in a very clear, written way. So I think that's great. So that's been quite a lot happening at the, as it were, in the Westminster village. Um, and in the end, that, guides, um, that, that has a uh, a, uh, a kind of enabling effect on things. If, if the, the government says there are no GCSEs, there are no GCSEs, you can't teach it. But what really matters is what happens on the ground. And there's quite a lot that's been happening on the ground. So this is one thing, put this up last year, I think, but CAS has gone in the last 12 months from about 600 members to about 1,500. Um, so that, I think, too, indicates a real upsurge of interest that we've seen in the media and, and, and all around. So but it's been reflected in our membership. And I think the thing that I'm proudest about in CAS is that it's a grassroots organization of individuals like the people in this room who just care and want to check, make the world a better place. And, um, and the great thing is that if we all get together and, and work together in this, we are making the world a better place. So what's been happening? 
30 hubs. I remember two or three years ago we had three, four, and most of them were run by Simon Humphreys. <laughs> Now there are 30, so hub leaders, thank you so much for what you do in running these hubs. This is the, the lifeblood of CAS, I think, is actually people meeting, sharing best practice, generating all that enthusiasm and making it happen on the ground. Um, they've, uh, Simon tells me there have been over 40 uh, uh, either hub meetings or, or um, CPD kind of training meetings since January, and um, nearly 1,000 people involved. That's, so it's beginning to get to scale, um, and that's stuff that, uh, that you know, the that the, the few people involved in the center of CAS have not been involved in instigating and making happening. You have made it happen. Um, we've, uh, the, uh, you'll have seen on the list a new uh, little subgroup interested in primary schools has formed. I think that's great. The primary schools is really important. Eight is too late is the mantra. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, but but to, be, to be fair, the center of gravity of most of what we've been thinking about has been rather secondary focused. Um, but that's really because we've lacked expertise in energy at primary level, so I'm really thrilled that a group of people have started to ginger up at primary level. But please do join that group and make it happen. Nobody's going to make it happen for you. You've got to decide what's, what's important. Let's make it happen, and we'll be as supportive as we can. And this, um, uh, Simon whizzed up our application to the Council for Subject Associations. We are now officially the Subject Association for Computer Science. That's good. And there's tons of other things going on around the country that I know nothing about. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Here's one particular thing I wanted to mention to you because I want some advice about it. Martin Saunders is an IT professional. And he um, put his head above the parapet and said, all right, so we want to, there's lots of IT professionals who would um, like to be helpful to this effort. They believe the, the CAS gospel, if you like, um, and they want to help. Well, what can they do? So um, he's made this sort of marriage broking agency. I'm sure you've seen it on the list, in which, which the idea is IT pros register and say, I'd be willing to help in some concrete way that uses some of my time to, to help my, my local schools. Teachers, that is you, can register and say, I would love to have a buddy of some kind to help me out with this kind of stuff. And then you kind of get together and figure out what to do. So uh, here's the website, computingplusplus.org. This is um, more or less all it is at the moment. But, uh, and here's a little map with people who register. Uh, um, uh, um, red is for IT pros and yellow is for schools. Not all that many yet. I think we haven't made a tremendous noise about it. But for me, the, um, the key questions are, uh, 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 oh, uh, the key questions are completely blank. Uh, yes, here we are. I think there are actually a lot of people who just have ordinary jobs, who are nothing to do with schools, who totally believe in this agenda, who are dissatisfied with the state of ICT education in the country as it stands today, and who want to help. But they somehow need to be told how to help. So the question I've got for you, and I, I would like you to, some of you to talk to me in the breaks about this, is do you actually want them? If you had an IT professional uh, uh, or, or, or several in your area who was willing to help, could you make use of them? They want to know what to do. So there's a certain danger that the, the, uh, the um, IT pro will say, well, I'm willing to help. What do you want me to do? And you say, well, what can you do? And then you, everyone sort of sits like this. So I'd like, I'd like stories of... Um, uh, from some of you, of, of ways in which this has worked, because I know that some of you do work with people who, who have ordinary jobs. I'd just like to hear some of what works productively for you, and maybe um, put, tell, tell me this week and um, put those stories out on the list as well. I'd really like to know, um, because the last thing we want to do is to do, uh, to do something like this and have it, um, uh, uh, have it what? Well, have it sort of be a damp squib or be something that you don't actually want, right? That would be stupid, right? So here you all are. I've got you, a captive audience. Tell me, right? This is what you want. Um, and then we've got to tell Martin as well. Uh, I'm going to be in front of 200 uh, developers at Goldman Sachs on, in two weeks' time, and they want to know how they can help. So please, uh, and there's, there's a whole bunch of people at Ocado I was talking to on the phone. That's the online website. Their, their business is IT, and they're, they're willing to. So just tell me. OK. Um, the big push that we did uh, by way of what we've been doing the last few months um, this spring was the, um, the big mail shot that we sent to every secondary head in the country. Uh, so the URL is here. I hope it was quite a lot of work to develop the material. We sent it all out to you, got lots of useful feedback, went through multiple iterations. So just getting those statements which kind of describe what is computer science, why is it important, why is it, is it a strategic issue for your school and not just a, a tactical one that you can hand off to your ICT department. The idea was to get governors and head teachers to think about this. So do try to get your, you know, uh, help, help raise it on the radar of your governors and head teachers if they are not already looking at at it. Bill's going to talk about the network of excellence that was the big ask in this letter that we said to every secondary head teacher. And we're pushing this out. Uh, I think uh, it's go going in, where, where's Tom? Wales? Are you? It's done. 
gone to all Wales secondary schools as well. Uh, we hope to get it to primary schools. I think it's gone to independence as well. Scotland have their own plans of re reshaping it in a slightly different way. So it's, it's been quite, that was a big thing. Uh, here, here's the, um, uh, the, so all the documents in this guy, right, are, are just here. Um, so you may find there's useful raw material in here that you can use yourself. Before I finish, I just want to um, uh, remind you all that uh, CAS is not alone in this. We are essentially part of a little federation of what I think of as sort of nucleuses of energy. You know, CS for fun and apps for good and coding for kids and code clubs. All these organizations are, are little, you know, they have their own identity. What? Hack to the future. Yes, yes, sorry. I, it's, it's there. I just, I'm not going to vocalize uh, all of them, but, but I, I do want to stress that all of these, these are sort of individual people usually behind each of these things. There's usually one or two people making something happen. And this is not, and we don't see the, 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 you know, these organizations or CAS as being in competition with each other. We're a kind of federation that are pushing together. and We talk each other up and say nice things about each other all the time. Um, so, uh, you know, we, 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 we love you is the message, and so make sure you're conveying that message too. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so here we are. Bottom line, totally different situation than we had um, 12 months ago. The DFE, I believe, is explicitly treating this area as a kind of guinea pig, right? They're standing back and seeing if the community will, will get active and do something about it. This is not the DFE's usual top-down way of doing things. They are consciously doing something more bottom-up. And this is, an both, this is real opportunity for us to get stuck in. So um, we have gone from being a guerrilla organization to having national impact. And so this is one of the things that Simon wanted, to, uh, wanted me to say to you, that while you're all uh, working well in the classrooms, your, your voice is getting heard by the Department for Education and by Ofsted. Shanila Saida, um, teacher from uh, Graveney, who's here today. Where are you, Shanila? Um, lost Shanila. She was here. I'm sure you walk in. Uh, they were at the back there. We met with um, David Brown, the Chief Inspector for ICT at Ofsted on Tuesday. So all of these organizations now have us very much on their radar and are very receptive. Whenever we meet them, they say, oh, tell us more. Tell us what's going on. So that's really good. But the only reason we can do this, this is the second half, is because you are doing this innovative stuff in your classrooms. We are only credible when we're sitting in front of DFE officials because we can say there were you know, uh, upwards of 1,000 teachers in CASB and buzzing around doing amazing things. So um, there, there's, this, there's this really good symbiosis. Where, where it's only possible because what you're, of what you're doing. Um, so there's kind of opportunity here and danger. This is my last slide. Um, opportunity is to make a lasting, decisive change. And I think we're really poised. The snowball, we push the snowball up to the top of the hill, and it's really rolling down the other side now. There's a danger that it'll roll down the wrong piste. Right, as this is a Claire Riley analogy, right? So there's a danger that we'll, having raised all this energy and expectations, we'll somehow, they'll be dashed and, you know, a thousand little qualifications will come along and the enthusiasm will leak away and everything will sort of subside into the sort of boring, same old, same old stuff. So I think it, the, the, the opportunity is really there. We, it's up to us to grab hold of the opportunity and kind of hang on, you know, uh, uh, as it were, cash in the gains that we've got to make a decisive and lasting change. And so that means we just, each of us has to do it, right? So, we, so you've got to not just work in your classroom, but do something external. Run a hack day, start a hub, go to a hub, join the flash meetings, um, you know, join the primary task force, whatever. You, only you can tell, but, but don't wait for anybody else to tell you to do it. Just get on and do it. And if we all do that, we'll, we'll change the world.